Hey everybody, today we're looking at something very near and dear to my heart, and that's gravity, or more specifically, the law of universal gravitation. This is one of Newton's laws, not one of the three laws of motion, but a separate law. Uh, you might be familiar with the story of the apple falling on his head, and have some idea that Newton said, ah, the apple falls, gravity. Well, actually there's a little bit more to it. Let's dig in. At this point, we're pretty used to the idea that gravity is the force that pulls an object down toward the surface of the Earth. And maybe we've even wrapped our head around the idea that there's a third law paired to that, and we're actually pulling the Earth up toward the object as well. That's a little bit tricky, but uh, even so, I think you know maybe we're, we're about to that point. But we're still thinking very Earth-centrically here. Gravity is the force down toward the center of the Earth. Well, it's, it's really much broader than that. Instead, we can say that gravity is a force that exists between two objects, and it doesn't much matter what the objects are. If they have mass, which is everything, everything has mass, if they have mass, then there is a gravitational attraction between them. Now, we notice that attraction for some objects, and we don't notice it for others. So there are obviously some factors that uh, determine how big a force that is. For example, uh, we're all attracted to other people through this gravitational force, um, or, you know, maybe other ways too, but through the gravitational force certainly. Um, but uh, we don't get flung across the room toward another person. Uh, we don't fall toward them like we fall toward the ground if we trip. Well, why is that? People are much, much smaller than the Earth, much less massive. And so we get this idea that the mass of our two objects is important in determining the force of gravity. Now, there are very, very massive objects out, out there, much more massive than the Sun, uh, sorry, than the Earth, uh, like the Sun, which is more mass than the Earth, but we don't get pulled toward them nearly as strong as we get pulled toward the Earth. Think about all the, the stars and black holes that are out there. How come those don't pull us right off the surface of the Earth? Well, that has to do with our distance from those objects, and the distance between objects I'm going to call R. So the bigger the distance between objects is, the smaller the gravitational force. And so Newton, uh, in his Law of Universal Gravitation, says simply that all objects are attracted to each other by this uh, force that we call gravity, and the strength of that attraction depends on the masses of the two objects. We say that it's proportional to the product of those two masses. And inversely proportional to the distance between them squared. And there is uh, what we call a constant of proportionality, just a coefficient that goes out in front of this. Since it's gravity we're dealing with, we use a g on this one. And this is to find the magnitude of the gravitational force. The direction of the gravitational force will always be toward the other object, one object toward the other one. Now that gravitational constant just has uh, one value that we'll ever have to use. It's on your green sheets, and it's g equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And the units on that, there's a couple different ways to write them. Uh, my, my preferred units on this would be neuter, uh, Newton meters squared, oops, yep, Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Uh, your green sheet actually has different units than that, but they are equivalent here. Uh, I like Newton meters squared per kilogram squared because it's easy to see where everything gets canceled. I'm going to have my uh, uh, distance in meters, and so when that gets squared, that'll cancel with these meters squared. I'll have these two masses in kilograms, so kilograms times kilograms gives me kilograms squared divided by kilograms squared, and I'm left just with newtons for my gravitational force. 
Now technically this equation is for what we would call point masses, um, the distance between point masses and the gravitational force between point masses. Uh, the idea here is if we could concentrate the mass of some object at a single point, this equation uh, would give us that relationship, uh, would give us that force between those two masses. Now real objects don't have their mass concentrated at one point, they have it spread out through space. And so uh, it turns out we can still imagine a point where all that mass would be concentrated and it's just somewhere in the middle of that mass distribution. Um, for symmetrical objects, uh, spherically symmetrical objects like the Earth um, or uh, you know, certain other shapes uh, like a cube or a rectangular prism, uh, the, this point where we can think of the mass being is just going to be right at the very center of the object. And so when we look at this value for r, we're actually measuring not the distance from surface to surface, but from center to center. So r is the distance between centers of objects, m is the mass of the two objects, g is the gravitational constant, the universal gravitational constant. So as long as you stay within this universe, then you can keep using that number. Next time you travel to a different universe, you'll have to look up one on, on one of their green sheets to see what their gravitational constant is. But here, it's always the same number. So let's try a problem involving the law of universal gravitation. So let's look at a person standing on the surface of the Earth. We want to find the force of gravity that exists between the person and the Earth. Uh, since the person's right on the surface of the Earth, the distance from the center of the Earth to the center of the person is basically just going to be the radius of the Earth. You would have, you know, an extra meter there for the, the uh, height of the person to get to their center, but you know, we're not going to worry about that, especially since the radius of the Earth is not actually a constant value here. We're using an approximation for that anyway. So we'll just treat that distance like it's the average radius of the Earth, which is given here the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and the mass of the person is 70 kilograms. We want the force of gravity between the Earth and the person. And remember, that's a force that the Earth gets and a force that the person gets. They both experience the same size force in opposite directions due to that interaction. So force of gravity equals g m1 m2 over r squared. So our force of gravity, the magnitude of that, is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, and that's newton meters squared per kilogram squared. That's the gravitational constant. It's on your green sheet. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms times, whoop, running on space here, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, times the mass of the person is 70 kilograms divided by the radius of the Earth, which is 6,378,100 meters and that gets squared. And when I punch that into my calculator, I get a gravitational force between the person and the Earth of about 685 newtons. Now, just out of curiosity, let's say we didn't know the mass of the person. Uh, you know, what would we get as a result there? So instead, let's make this force of gravity equals still 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the earth 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms uh, since we don't know the mass of the person let's just call that m divided by the radius of the earth squared 6,378,100 meters squared and when I put that into my calculator, I get a result of force of gravity equals, uh, let's see, that's going to be 
the units on that. I'll have, let's see, kilograms will cancel with uh, one factor of kilograms. will cancel with one factor of kilograms there. My meters squared cancel with my meters squared there. I'm left with newtons per kilogram. And I know that newtons is the same as kilogram meters per second squared. Divided by kilogram is just meters per second squared. And that's times my mass. M, or maybe more familiar, the magnitude of the force of gravity equals mg. Neat how that works out, isn't it? 9.8 meters per second squared. It's just the result of plugging in the, uh, the, the numbers for the more general equation for an object at the surface of the Earth. So you take an object significantly farther away from the surface of the Earth, way up high um, above the surface, and we'd see that that 9.8 number would have to change to accommodate that. The further we get, the more that number is going to change. Though even small changes will have a, a small effect on that. Uh, so that's the force of gravity, the uh, interaction that causes all objects in the universe to be attracted to all other objects in the universe. This is the longest acting of all the forces and is responsible for the shapes of planets and of solar systems and galaxies. And indeed, the shape of our universe itself is uh, determined by this very long-reaching gravitational force. More on that to come and gravitational field, the idea and the calculations still to come as well. Thanks very much for watching, folks. If you learned something, by all means, subscribe, leave a comment, give me a like, whatever you like to do with these videos. I'd appreciate it. Thank you much.